Today, I propose to discuss as a sort of follow on to a recent program we did about we did on the Duran about cryptocurrencies and digital currencies um, with our friend Crypto Rich on the Duran a few a short time ago. Uh, a slightly different, though, related issue. Um, in our program with Crypto Rich on the Duran, we talked about the development of cryptocurrencies, including, of course, Bitcoin, which is the major currency, uh, the major cryptocurrency that has evolved over recent years. In this program, I intend or propose to talk about a different but related topic, because one of the most interesting developments, and perhaps one of the developments with the greatest importance for the evolution of the world financial system is that certain central banks around the world are busy setting up their own digital versions of their national currencies. Countries that are doing that include Russia, China, Sweden, and also, incidentally, the European Central Bank. So before very long, uh, we probably will be seeing digital versions of the ruble, the Chinese currency, the RMB, the Swedish krona, and indeed the euro as well. So we're going to be looking before very long at a range of digital currencies, the digital versions of national currencies. Now, um, it seems that the pioneer in this field is Russia, and they're proposing to roll out a pilot version of the digital ruble this year in Crimea, where it will be tested for them to see how it works. But apparently, um, this is still... Um, a programme in its infancy, and despite developments being uh, made by various central banks, um, it's not expected that digital currencies will become widespread for uh, perhaps uh, five years. Having said that, there was an extremely interesting meeting which was um, um, uh, attended recently by the uh, first deputy governor of the Russian Central Bank, a lady called Olga Skorobogatova. Now, Miss Skorobogatova made some rather interesting comments at this meeting, which took place virtually, and it was about the reasons for digital currencies, and uh, particularly about, about the effect of digital currencies on the existing world interbank payment system, which is known as SWIFT. SWIFT is the uh, system which links together all the various banks um, in the world, or at least the vast majority of them, and which enables banks to move money between each other across the international system. It is based in Belgium, but of course, the major dominant player in it is the United States. And it is widely accepted that the single most powerful sanction that the United States is able to impose upon other countries is not trade sanctions or personal sanctions against officials, but disconnection from the SWIFT payment system, which is not only used by banks to transfer money internationally, but which is regularly used by banks to transfer money between each other within individual nations. So by way of example, if a German bank wants to transfer money on behalf of a client to another German bank, they use SWIFT to do it. That is the interbank payment system that nearly all of us come across and uh, we, all, we all know about IBEC numbers and IBAN numbers and that's all related to SWIFT. The United States is the dominant player in SWIFT. If it makes a decision to disconnect a country from SWIFT, uh, then that country is going to be disconnected even if other countries are not happy about it and even if 
the, Swift, the bureaucracy of SWIFT in uh, Belgium is opposed to it. Now, they did it very recently with Iran. There have been rumblings from time to time that they're thinking of doing it with Russia, though they've always held back for, from doing it with Russia because of Russia's major role in the international trading system. Nonetheless, it has been all this talk about Russia being disconnected from SWIFT, which apparently has acted as the trigger for the Russians to develop their own digital currency. Now, before I discuss that, I'm going to briefly say that the Russians, uh, worried about possible disconnection from SWIFT, have created their own interbank payment system for uh, moving money between banks and companies within Russia itself. And though that is apparently not active at the moment, the Russians have said that if they are disconnected from SWIFT, it will be activated. And after a certain period of instability, they expect their banking system to return, at least in terms of domestic transactions, back to normal fairly fast. Another country which was actually disconnected from SWIFT was Iran has had a major problems, created major problems for the Iranian banking system. But again, I would say that the Iranians do seem, over the last year especially, to have been able to find ways round SWIFT so that money can move around Iran without having to go through SWIFT anymore. And it's been a surprise to many people how quickly and rapidly that was done. But of course, Iran because it is disconnected from SWIFT, does have problems moving money around the international system. It cannot make interbank payments in the way that it used to, because it cannot use SWIFT any longer. And that has undoubtedly affected Iran's ability to trade with other countries in the way that it previously could. So, where do digital currencies come in? Well, as we've discussed, unless and until these payment systems like the one that Russia has and the one that Iran has apparently developed and the one that China already has all start interlinking with each other, which is possible, uh, they are not really a proper and full replacement for SWIFT because currencies, money, cannot move outside these countries. However, it seems that with digital currencies, they can. And this is where I come back to the comments that Miss Skorobogatova said. She said that, uh, and I'm quoting her now directly, that these are her words, we can deal with direct integration issues. In the, the case of SWIFT, it may not be necessary because it will be a different kind of technological interaction. What I understand Ms. Skorobogatova means is that with digital currencies, it will be possible to move for banks and financial institutions and even perhaps for private individuals and companies to simply transfer money directly from one place to another, from one computer, in effect, to another, um, um, electronically, without any longer having to go through SWIFT. So, for example, if Gazprom, the Russian gas monopoly, wants to pay money to a company in Germany, which is carrying out work in relation to a pipeline project, which is under American sanction, uh, Gazprom can simply transfer digital rubles to that, com to that company in Germany, which can then store them on its own computer systems, presumably without going through SWIFT, and without, in fact, even, as I understand it, placing them, placing them in a conventional bank. They would, of course, remain rubles, but some companies might choose to maintain ruble accounts, which they can do in their own systems without putting them in banks. 
And of course, there is always the option if you want to uh, convert your rubles, your digital rubles, you can sell them at the normal rate of exchange and buy euros or dollars instead. But the decision is yours. You don't have to worry about doing it through the bank. You can do it directly yourself. And as more and more digital currencies appear, you could probably do that much more simply by converting your digital rubles into digital, say, euros or digital U UN, RMBs, and do so without having to worry about banks by going directly onto the forex markets yourself. So that is going to make a radical change. It's going to mean, if it's true, that the most powerful instrument the United States has to put pressure on other countries, which is disconnection from SWIFT and exclusion from the US dollar system, is going to disappear. And if Skoro Bogatova is right, the time span for that is around five to seven years once all the blockchain technologies have been properly sorted through and the systems become, in effect, fully secured. Now, that is going to make a radical change because one can argue that the single greatest source of US power over the international system is not the US's very powerful armed forces, it's not the US's still very considerable manufacturing and industrial capacity. It's not even its undoubted continued technological prowess. It is its dominant position in the international financial system. And if countries are able to circumvent that system as it exists today, by, by bypassing entities like SWIFT, then they're able to trade with each other directly in a way that bypasses the United States, bypasses the dollar, and enables them to make sanctions, in effect, meaningless. That is going to make a dramatic geopolitical change. It will also make a dramatic economic change also. It will mean that it will not be possible for the United States and indeed the European Union, which has been joining the United States in its various sanctions wars, to isolate countries in the way that it could. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether this development takes place, whether Ms. Skorobogatova is right, whether the technologies can indeed be perfected and whether we will indeed start to see digital versions of national currencies appear. It's a little spoken of issue, but one which it seems to me has enormous potential significance, both in political and in geopolitical terms. Thank you very much. Please join me on my next programme. And please remember to go to the Duran shop. You'll find links below. Buying our various wonderful products, our famous magic mugs, our amazing T-shirts, our wonderful hats, um, all those extraordinary things that you will find in our shop. And please also remember to subscribe to this channel and to the Duran's channel and to search us out in our various other platforms and also support us at the Duran through Subscribestar, Patreon and PayPal. And please join me on my next programme, both on this channel and in the Duran as well. Thank you very much.